There are a few reasons that I really, really enjoy the Wii. The first reason is the virtual console concept. Being able to play Nintendo games, Super Nintendo games, Genesis games, arcade games, all in one stop. It's TurboGrafx-16 games, all in one system. It is something that I love very much. Unfortunately, you can't buy those games anymore, but as long as the ROMs work, uh, you're able to play them on your Wii all in one stop, and that is really cool. The other thing about the Wii that I like very much much is this resurgence of light gun games that we saw with the system. I've been a fan of light gun games for a long time, dating all the way back to an arcade game called Crossbow, which was basically a game where you had characters walking from left to right, and you had to protect the characters from falling objects or projectiles being thrown at them, so you had to make them survive as they walked across the screen. It is much easier said than done, but it is still a lot of fun to play, and that was my first experience with a light gun game. Later on, I would play games like Kogan Zally on the NES, or Duck Hunt on the NES, or Terminal Terminator 2, the arcade game, which is a great light gun shooter, uh, and a couple of others. So light gun games, and I remember pumping tons of quarters into these, especially as an adult when I had the disposable income to spend. Uh, light gun games were games that I played quite often. So thanks to the Wii, we saw a resurgence of those, and I have a pair of games to open up for this particular episode of Unsealed, and I am even sporting my Wii Sports shirt for the occasion. These are both Sega games, by the way, so you know that there is a uh, there is a bit of arcade quality going on here. These are conversions of actual Sega arcade games that I have played and enjoyed. The first of these is from 2006. This is Ghost Squad right here. This is a fairly early light gun game, fairly early in the Wii's lifespan, and it's a game that I do remember playing when I got the Wii at launch, and it is still a game that I enjoy playing to this day. Uh, aim shoot, duck, reload. So it seems a little bit like Time Crisis, but not really. And we'll go over what the uh, what the features are and things. And I know it's tough because of the lighting to see some of these screenshots, but I'll try and make it easier for you to see. This does support not only the Wii Zapper, but also the Wii Remote and the Nunchuck Controller. So you can shoot your way to the top of the leaderboards for worldwide bragging rights, which unfortunately can't do anymore because the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection is long since dead. Uh, as the light gun arcade game hit comes to the Wii with your finger on the trigger, test your skills in an all new training mode and co-op play for up to four sharpshooters. Go in alone or recruit players for your special op squad and take out terrorists from the dense jungle to Air Force One. And yes, this is an arcade game. It's a coin op. I have seen it in a couple of different arcades. I've played it. I'm not very good at it. And I certainly don't like popping tokens into games that I know I'm not very good at. But this is one that I will pop a few tokens in into every now and again, or now uh, you swipe a card. I've most recently seen this down at Foxwoods Resort and Casino in uh, Connecticut. So that's where I see this most frequently. So we have a brand new copy here. This is still sealed, as my buddy Pat the NES Punk likes to say. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to open this up for this episode of Unsealed and see what is inside. I got my trusty scissors right here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to open this up just like that. And this is going to replace my disc-only copy of the game, so I'm pretty excited about that. We're going to take the plastic off here, just like that. There's no uh, ID seal or anything, so we can just open it up. Ah, yes. This does have the artwork on it. Here is the Ghost Squad Wii disc and also an instruction manual. Remember those? We'll go ahead and take the instruction manual, take a look at it here in just a moment. And the instruction manual is in black and white, so it is what it is. It's a 20-page long instruction manual, so there's some, uh, there's some size to it. As I mentioned, it is in black and white, and it does give you the very basics in terms of how to play. also goes over some of the weaponry instead. Let's see if there's any kind of background story here. It talks about the squad. It says here, the Ghost Squad is a top-secret special forces unit assembled by the United Nations. Ghost stands for Global Humanitarian Operation and Special Tactics, and the elite soldiers execute humanitarian operations throughout the world. Uh, the unit is responsible for sensitive missions that are out of conventional armed forces realms. All of their missions must be quickly completed without, reason, uh, without leaving a trace. They are the unsung, unseen warriors who fight in the shadows to defend world peace. 
The two ace soldiers of the Ghost Squad who will take the leading role in the front are the Alpha Unit. Player one is Alpha Blue and player two is Alpha Red. There are also Bravo Unit, uh, Bravo Unit and Charlie Unit by your side, as well as the commander who gives you instructions on how to get through the missions. And the commander, for whatever reason, and I'll try and get you a closer picture, looks kind of like Tim Curry on a bad day. Maybe, kind of, sort of. I'm probably a little off on that, but whatever. Um, so there's arcade mode, training mode, rankings. Again, the online options are not there anymore, so you're only going to be playing locally to see who has the highest score. Party mode also has a maximum of up to four players that can simultaneously carry out the mission, so that's fine too. You have four Wii remotes going on at the same time. It can get pretty crazy. Uh, so it is a rail shooter, just like you'd expect with light gun shooters to be. Um, it is challenging, uh, and certainly depending on where your Wii uh, remote sensor bar is, can depend sometimes on where how your aim is affected. I tend to play sitting down, so I have my sensor bar below the TV, but a lot of other people, because they play standing up, will have it above. So it depends on how that works out. It is challenging, but you can still play all the way through it. And the really cool thing about this is the more times you play through it, the more things you unlock. So not only are you going for a higher score each time, but you're also trying to unlock things as you play through the game. So that's pretty cool as well. The game is not very expensive. You can get this uh, complete for less than $10 for sure. And it's a lot of fun to go, black, go back and replay, whether you have the original Wii like I do or whether you have the Wii U as well. So that is Ghost Squad, a uh, Sega arcade game, and it is a lot of fun to play. I think that you should give it a shot if you haven't already. And again, it's fairly inexpensive, so go ahead and try it out. The other game really doesn't need a big introduction. It is one of the more popular Sega arcade games. It was made even more popular when it was released on the Sega Dreamcast as part of the launch back on September of 1999. However, there was also a second game added to this set. I am talking about... The House of the Dead 2 and 3 Return, which was released in 2007 for the Wii. This also uses the Zapper or the Wii Remote and Nunchuck combination. So you see here, Make Them Dead Again is what it says right there. We do have the screenshots. And again, these are fairly decent ports of the arcade originals for both House of the Dead 2 and 3. They're fierce, they're dead, and they're coming for you. Sounds like an Offspring song. Uh, mow down packs of clawing, biting zombies with your Wii Zapper in the return of two gory arcade hits, the House of the Dead 2 and the House of the Dead 3. Destroy hideous bosses across 12 levels in two-player co-op mode, blast the Scourge with the rapid-fire Wii Zapper, and there are over six terrifying gameplay modes. We're going to look at some of those when we get this open. Again, this is from 2007, so let's go ahead and we'll get our trusty scissors out. And we'll try and open it up this way this time so you can see me actually open it. There we go. This is another one that I just had disc only, so I was happy to pick up a brand new copy so I can have it complete for my collection. When we open it up, we do see the rather scary disc art here for the House of the Dead 2 and 3 Return. And we also have a very kind of sinister looking manual over here on the left. We'll take that out. Oh, by the way, some great new games available now. You got Ghost Squad, you have Mario and Sonic of the Olympic Games, so I think this might be a reprint. Uh, Sonic Riders Zero Gravity and Sega Bass Fishing, which by the way is not as good as the original. This is G's File. Suffer like G did. <laughs> One of the coolest things, of course, about House of the Dead 2 and even House of the Dead 3 to some extent is the hilariously and purposefully bad voice acting in these games. If you have not watched them on YouTube or have not experienced them yourself, you owe it to yourself to check them out because they are hilarious to listen to. As we open up the instruction manual, it is in black and white, just like the last one, and we do have a storyline for House of the Dead, and it is in small print. I'm not going to read all of that. Um, we also have controller configuration, whether you want to play with the nunchuck and the Wii remote or the zapper, which is very helpful. And I believe that there's, uh, instructions for both two and three in here. I'm trying to look. Here's the house of the dead two. That's what we've got right there. We have arcade mode. What else do we have? We have original mode as well. Collect items to help you clear the levels. I think the uh, Dreamcast version had this as well. Right. Original mode is ideal for anyone who feels the arcade mode is too difficult, so that's kind of nice. 
Uh, boss mode as well, or it's kind of a boss rush mode, which is cool. There's a mini game you can play to earn items in the original mode as well, which is pretty nice. The If a certain requirement is met, I didn't know this, you will play a mini game immediately after you start up the system with the House of the Dead 2 and 3 return disc and select House of the Dead 2 from the game select screen. Fight off the zombies and you'll earn items that can be used in the original mode. I did not know that was a thing, but there it is right there. That's what it says. And training mode is here as well. It also explains some of the items you can get in original mode. That is the mode that I tend to play the most. The arcade mode is nice, and I have played the original arcade game, but the original mode adds a little something to it. And as the instruction manual says, it's a little more forgiving, which for someone like me who's <laughs> blind as a bat, you need all the help you can get in a light gun game. We also have House of the Dead 3 here, which was a step up in terms of visuals and presentation. I believe that the PlayStation 3 got uh, House of the Dead 3 and 4, uh, and these games look fantastic on that platform as well. I believe they used the PlayStation Move, or you could use the controller. Uh, I used the controller for that game myself. It does have a branching story system House of the Dead 3 does have. There are also teamwork events as well. There is an arcade mode and a time attack mode here. Uh, let's see if there's an original mode. There is not. Um, the time attack mode, you must get as far as possible within the time allotted. Taking damage from monsters decreases the time remaining, while defeating monsters and successfully completing teamwork events increases it. So that's kind of neat. That's a neat way to play it. I do think the arcade mode is slightly easier in House of the Dead 3 than in House of the Dead 2, but that could be uh, your mileage may vary in that particular instance. Uh, let's see if there's anything else to note or items here. Rankings, tutorial movies. If you play the arcade mode of either game for the first time, a tutorial movie will be played before the game. If a certain requirement is met, another tutorial movie will be played the next time you play. That's kind of neat. There are gameplay options and some tips for rookie AMS agents here as well. The House of the Dead games are a lot of fun to play. Uh, it does have that, uh, that zombie theme to it, which is why uh, the... Games are rated M for mature. Uh, there is some blood and gore and some violence here. So if you are under 17 years of age, just make sure you kind of have your parents okay. Uh, there are far worse mature rated games out there. I think you can get away with playing this. You can get away with playing it in the arcade, so why not at home? I don't think it's that bad, uh, but it's not something like, uh, like uh, Ghost Squad where T was the rule of the day. The Wii is fantastic for light gun games. There are a ton. Um, House of the Dead Overkill, which is a game I wanted to get new and open on camera, but is just too expensive, is another example. Um, there was also a two-pack of light gun games from Sega, uh, LA Machine Guns, and there was one other. Uh, those games are fun. Uh, Link's Crossbow Training, which is my favorite Legend of Zelda game. Don't laugh. Uh, that is a lot of fun to play as well. Target Terror from... Uh, from Midway is also, uh, and it wasn't Midway, who was it? It was Konami, I think, that released that. That was a Raw Thrills game, uh, and that's another fantastic light gun game. It has shot up in value of recent uh, of recent time as well, so that's one to look into. I do have another pair of light gun games to open, but that is going to be saved for Halloween. I have a special Halloween episode of Unsealed planned, and you will see what those games are then. In the meantime, if you have played either of these games, I'd love to hear about your experiences with them. What do you think of them? Did you like the light gun games on the Wii, or did you think that they were kind of gimmicky? Uh, myself, I really enjoy them. It's one of the reasons I keep going back to the Wii time and time again, and I hope that you're able to find some value in these as well. As always, I thank you very much for checking out this and all of my episodes of Unsealed, and until the next time, my friends, take care of yourselves and each other, and we will see you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>